2, 17 through 23, and also verses 27 and 28. Daniel 2, that's in Old Testament. 17 through 23, and then also 27 and 28. Daniel 2, 17 through 23, and also 27 and 28. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. Yeah. They would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and the seasons. He yeah. removeth the king and setteth up the kings, and he giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep secrets. He knoweth what is in the darkness, yeah. and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O God, yeah. my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me. Now, Lord, we desire of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Verse 27 and 28, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, and magicians, and soothsayers shew to the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets, and yet hath known to the king Nebuchadnezzar, which shall be in the latter days. A dream and the visions thy head upon that bed of these. I'm going to talk about what to do when the bottom drops out. Part two. What to do when the bottom drops out. If the bottom haven't dropped out on you, keep on living. Amen. Keep on living. A big colleague of mine took a trip to an amusement park some years ago and got on a ride known as the Rotor. Perhaps you've been on one in King's Island. If you've lived out west, perhaps you've been on the one at Magic Mountain. Uh, there it is known as the Vortex or the Spin Out. If you've been in the South, maybe you've been on one of Six Flags, known as the Cliffhanger. All these rides are interrelated. The Rotor is the original ride designed by Ernest Hofmeister, who was a German engineer in the late 1940s. The Rotor is a large upright barrel that travels so fast that when the floor retracts, the riders are stuck to the wall. And when the floor retracts, the bottom literally drops out. At the end of the ride cycle, the drum slows down, and the gravity takes over. And the riders slowly slide down the wall and onto what was moments before a flawless ride. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's somebody here today mm -hmm. that life has had you uh, spinning mm -hmm. on a cycle mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. where your back has been yeah. up against the wall. Yeah. 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 The circumstances seem to have trapped you against the wall mm -hmm. of despair. Mm -hmm. uh, a reoccurring sickness. A new diagnosis where the doctors have given you less time to live than they did at your last visit. A job loss, or in the case of my knowledge this week, untimely deaths. 
Mm-hmm. Then you look down and it looks like the bottom has just dropped out. And if you attempt to step out, you do so at your own demise. Mm -hmm. For our scripture lesson today, in order to appreciate what is taking place in Daniel, chapter 2, we've got to go and take a look back at chapter 1. In chapter 1, Daniel and his three friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, also known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, have been stripped of their ancestral heritage, robbed of their history and their background, and even their names have been changed. They were forced to learn to comply with the Babylonian society. They had to learn a new language. They had to learn a new culture. And King Nebuchadnezzar had decided that they would sit at the king's table. But Daniel and the three Hebrew boys decided they would not defile themselves by sitting at Nebuchadnezzar's table. <coughs> So they ate vegetables and drank water for 10 days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After 10 days, they were fatter and fairer than all of the councils yeah. of yeah. Babylon. Yeah. They took a risk. God was there by their side. Whenever you risk it all for God, God is sure to stand by your side. Whenever you declare that you will not compromise, God will reward your integrity. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, along with Daniel, after 10 days of being vegetarians, became came a slave, but now have been elevated to positions equivalent to prime ministers. They're now governors in Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon, but then in chapter 2, the bottom falls out. Their positions of prominence and prestige was now threatened. Everything they had refused to compromise about mm -hmm. is about to fall out from underneath them. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. So he calls in all of the magicians and soothsayers and all the wise men in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. He calls them into counsel with himself because he wants to give them, he wants them to give him the interpretation of the dream. Right. And Nebuchadnezzar Says so all these wise men and suits says, I need you to interpret my dream. They said, Does King tell me what your dream is? Uh -huh. We'll be able to give you the interpretation. Mm -hmm. But Nebuchadnezzar says, I need the interpretation of the dream without telling you what my dream is. Okay. Because if you're wise men and magicians and soothsayers and astrologers, you ought to know yeah. what the dream is yeah. Yeah. before I tell you what it is. Right. Yeah. They said, No man can know what you're trying to ask, sir. No man can know the interpretation of a dream unless you first tell us what the dream is. Nebuchadnezzar then signs a decree, decree that all the wise men, astrologers, and magicians, and Chaldeans be put to death. Yeah. That includes Daniel. The Bible says that Daniel is ten times wiser than they are. Mm -hmm. So the same captain that preserved Daniel and his friends with vegetables and water goes to Daniel with the decree signed by Nebuchadnezzar himself, that Daniel, who was ten times wiser than anybody in the kingdom, would be put to death. He's been elevated to prime minister, and the bottom drops out. He's been given position and prestige, but the bottom drops out. Life is going smoothly, then the bottom drops out. Everything coming up roses, but the bottom drops out. Uh, somebody ought to be able to testify that right. when uh, life finally starts good, so it starts going good on your behalf, yeah. how the bottom drops out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A parent is sick and you have to take care of them for years. You, you worked on a job for 30 years and now you're laid off. You plan retirement and now you've got to take care of your grandchildren. Your marriage hits a pothole. The bottom drops out when you're on your way to divorce court. Mm -hmm. You plan for life to work a certain way. Yeah. Uh, you're looking for this and God sends that. Yeah. You're looking for that and God sends this. Well. You're looking for something over here and God sends something over there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And even though you love God, yeah. even though you come to church and even read the Bible, just because you're a Christian does not mean that the bottom 
will not fall out. Now, be awfully immature to think that every day is going to be a good day. Some days are better than others. Now, some days, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Especially when you get over 50. Yesterday was my right shoulder hurt. And I got that straight this morning. Now it's my left shoulder. Well, And to make matters worse, I ran out of CBD. <laughs> then if your shoulder not hurting, it's your leg. If it's not your leg, it's your back. If it's not your back, it's your washing machine. If it's not your washing machine, it's your dryer. If it's not your dryer, it's the iron. If it's not the iron, it's the air conditioner. If it's not the air conditioner, you got to knock your son in the mouth. If it's not your son, it's your daughter at the front door. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Because when you serve God, it doesn't mean that the bottom won't drop out from time to time. Yeah. There's no immunity uh, from life seeming to spin out of control. Yeah. Yeah. There's no detour in life that exempts you from having your heart broken from time to time. Okay. Sometimes life serves you bitter servings and will not give you the cream and sugar to sweeten it up, which means you just gotta take it as it comes. Okay. But, but here is that in a position Prominence and prestige. And now the man who saved him comes to him with a written decree that if he can, cannot give the king not only the interpretation but what the dream is in the first place, he's going to die. And Daniel teaches us how to respond when the bottom drops out. You can't find the answer in the bottom of a bottle. You, we won't do it. Heroin, meth, and fentanyl won't fix it. You can't snort it away with cocaine. And sometimes your problem with your children and family or even yourself can get so bad that you got to drop down on your knees and say, God, I can't fix this. I don't know what to do about this. I've tried everything I know to do. And if you got to use me, then use me, but you have to fix this. Lord, I'm available to you. Uh, my storage is empty. And I'm available to you. So here's the first response that Daniel gives us when the bottom drops out. Daniel goes to find Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and says to them, whatever you're doing, stop it right now. I need you to first of all help me to pray. So when you can't handle a situation, if prayer is not your first response, which it really should be, then it ought to be your next response. Mm -hmm. We're so self-absorbed. We're so techno savvy uh, that we, we we know to look for an answer for something online. Perhaps there are those right now while I'm preaching and you're searching the net. But when I see your face lit up, it's not lit up because of the Holy Ghost, but it's a reflection of your iPad and your fascination with Facebook. But, but I suggest that you get off Facebook and put your face in this book. You know, shall forget, my youngest daughter Johnson one time had a phone. She brought it watching. <laughs> and I uh, read the scripture, and I said, I looked at her, and she said, I kept trying to tell me, it was the Bible. Well, she has a Bible on her phone. But her face all lit up. What is going on with all this? Well, she was following with the Bible. <laughs> but, but you do understand that there are some answers that you can't find online. Mm -hmm. That there's something that Google and Yahoo yeah. don't know nothing about. Yeah. Yeah. And Sarah Palin has shown us that Wikipedia is not a file. And when somebody wants to change something into Wikipedia, they pay a fee and write their own story. True or not. Uh, but the only true answer we find is when our souls are in trouble and the bottom drops out, when our backs are against the wall, is God himself. Oh, folk, you say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. You can. Yes. The medical center's got doctors, but God got the power. Yes. Doctors and pharmacists have medicine, but God got the power. Yes. There's a power in prayer. Yes. The effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous yes. availeth much. Yes. Daniel said, Now, brothers, you got a vested interest in this prayer. 
Because if I don't get a favorable response, all of us are going to be killed. And the Bible says Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego pray for Daniel. Because mm -hmm. Daniel was given by God the ability to interpret dreams. Yes, yes sir. But he couldn't interpret the dreams unless he knew what the dream was. And God gave the response after his friends prayed. Yeah. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got off their knees, Daniel had to answer the interpretation and the dream. Now here's the second response as to what you ought to do when the bottle drops out. After you pray, yes, sir. do what Daniel did. Daniel gave God praise. So after yes. God responds to your prayer, secondly, you ought to praise the Lord. Well, yeah. so don't act like you made it just because you went to Ivy, right. Ivy East, Harvard, Howard, or Stanford. Don't act like you made it because you just graduated with all A's for girls. Well. Uh, we should never be too smart to give God the praise well, he deserves. Well, well, well. Now, now, you know, you can worship God quietly, but you cannot praise him quietly. If God's been good to you, he's worth more to you than not in every now and then. If he's made a way for you, he, you ought to do more than just clap your hands. If he's opened a door for you, he's come to your rescue. If he's given you a job that you weren't qualified for. He's made a way out of nowhere. He's got you or your children off drugs. He's brought you out of jail and brought your child out of jail. You don't come to church with your mouth closed. You want to say, hey, the Lord brought me for a mighty long way. Did, did you not know that praise is the rent you pay on blessings you've already been given? And somebody in my house today, you behind on your rent payment. God woke you up this morning and you ain't said thank you. You you behind on your rent payment. God put food on your table and you went on an eight without thanking him. You you behind on your rent payment. If you went to readers, and now would be a good time to catch up. He, he's been good to you. You ought to catch up on your rent payment. And this coronavirus sad ought not be an excuse uh, to be behind on your rent payment because if you're here and you're still alive, you ought to catch up on your rent payment. He gave you a car to drive. You ought to catch up on your rent payment. He gave you friends and family to love you. You ought to catch up on your rent payment. He's given you health and strength. Catch up on your rent payment. Your mom and dad living. Catch up on your rent payments. You want money in your pocket and you're too selfish to return to him what belongs to him who ties it off. Catch up on your rent payments. You owe me and you woke up in ICU. You ought to catch up on your rent payments. Every time he wakes me up I want to tell him thank you for what you already done. The fact that we breathe his air we experience the breeze of his wind. And the freshness of the rain is reason to thank him. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. I didn't make it because I went to college. I didn't make it because I came from a good family. I should be in jail right now, to be honest with you. But God's grace is so amazing. But I can't let nobody dictate how I praise God. If you really came to praise God, you're going to have to tune out those who didn't come for the right reason. Some came to criticize. Somebody said, don't take all that. Yeah. But speak for yourself. Yeah. It might not take all that for you. Yeah. But Lawrence, I would go to Sonny Mason when he used to say, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on me. I came here with a purpose of giving God praise. So I'm going to pray. Then I'm going to praise. And thirdly, I'm going to proclaim his name. The Bible said, I bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble will hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name. And here it is, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. I said he's good. Yes, he is. Uh, he's good. Yes, sir. We wouldn't be where we are right now if it wasn't for the goodness of God. Yeah. He's been good to us. Some of us were crooks. We were low down. We were strung out. We were smoked out. We were tweaking in the rain and didn't know it. 
We were outdoors. It didn't make a difference as long as we could get a hit. Uh, we, we hadn't bathed in weeks. Uh, some of us had the same clothes on for the same days. We stole and sold and begged money chasing the ghosts. And there was nothing we wouldn't try. There's nothing we wouldn't do. But God looked beyond all of that and sent Jesus to save us. While we were yet without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. He demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, while we were still dirty and nasty and filthy, doing our thing, Christ died for us. He's been too good to me. When I look back over my life, he's been too good to me. He was right there when the bottom dropped out for me. When the bottom dropped out on me, I can tell you, I almost let go. I was right on the verge for edge of a breakthrough and couldn't see it. The devil thought he had me. But Jesus came and grabbed me and he held me close so I wouldn't let go. God's mercy kept me so I wouldn't let go. And the reason I'm here today is because God kept me. I'm alive
Yeah. We've not only been pardoned, but we've been justified. Yeah. Yeah. To be pardoned says that you're guilty, but you're being released because the yeah. president has signed a document yeah. that pardons you. Yeah. So people like Roger Stone can do all kinds of dirt and lie and yeah. cheat and steal. And yes, he's guilty, but he's been pardoned. Now, I think it's an unfair abuse of the law in this case, but it's reality, despite the fact that we have a so-called law and order president. But, but justified is a different term. To be justified means that your offense has been erased and you're no longer guilty, and that the power of the blood of Jesus covers you. His blood has descended us. His blood is so powerful that it has descended us. And now we're justified in the eyes of God. Psalm 103, 12 says, as far as the east is from the west. So far as every, has he removed our transgressions from us. Uh -huh. Isaiah 44, 22 says, I swept your fences away like a cloud and your sins have been removed. Like the morning dew, return to me for I have redeemed you. For in the Micah 7, he has cast our sins into the depth of the sea. And 1 John 1, John 1 and 9 says that we confess our sins. Yeah. It's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when the bottom dropped out, things looked mighty bad. When we look at dysfunctional families, we look at crime and drug infestation in our community. When we look at what's going on on the national scene, dirty politics, voter suppression, involuntary hysterectomies of immigrant women, and a virus that's killing many. Uh, it looks mighty bad. Yeah. And there, there are pessimists who say that there's no way to make sense of the breakdown of our society. Right. But it came out to tell you that God has the answer yeah. to our human tragedy. Yeah. His name is Jesus. Yeah. He came and died for our sin. Yeah. Rose early Sunday morning with all power yeah. in his hand. Yeah. And he's soon coming back again. Yeah. Yeah. The first time he came, he came to receive death. Mm -hmm. But when he comes again, he's coming to rebuke death. The first time he came, he came as a voluntary victim. But when he comes again, he's coming as a victor. The first time he came, he came in misery. But when he comes again, he's coming in majesty. The first time he came, he came to deal with man's guilt. But when he comes again, he's coming in glory. The first time he came, he came as a carpenter. Yeah. But when he comes again, he's coming as a conqueror. Yeah. The first time he came, they didn't know who he was. Yeah. But when he comes again, every knee shall bow. Yeah. And every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord of all. Yeah. The first time he came, he came riding on a donkey. Yeah. But when he comes again, he'll be riding on a cloud. Yeah. Somebody say, ride on, King Jesus. No man can hinder thee. Right on, King Jesus. No man can a hinder thee. In that grave, get the morning. Fare thee well, fare thee well. In that grave, get the morning. Fare thee well, fare thee well. No man can a hinder thee. No man can a hinder thee. In that grave, get the morning. Fare thee well, fare thee well. In that grave, get the morning. Fare thee well. Right on, King Jesus. Right on, King Emmanuel. Right on, King Jesus. No man, no man, no man, no leader who Trump and nobody else can hinder thee. No man, no man. Again, your word, uh, knowing that the bottom has dropped out on many, but we know you can turn it around. Amen. Yes, yes. Just thank you. We pray that as we leave this place, but not your presence, you give us traveling grace and arriving mercy to our various destinations. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, as we commune with the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now and forever. Shall we all say, Amen. 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 Amen.